Hey there, physics students. So we've talked about um, the metric system in our last lesson, and we've learned about the kinds of units that we use to measure things in science. And now let's talk a little bit about the numbers that we use, because the numbers that we use in science are a little bit different than the numbers that you might use in math, right? In math, you work with numbers that they call pure numbers. When they say four, they mean four, and it's exactly four, right? But when you measure things, there's always a little bit of uncertainty involved, right? What we're dealing with aren't pure numbers, they're measurements. And there's always gonna be a little bit of uncertainty involved in them. And so in order to keep track of that uncertainty and uh, to kind of learn about it a little bit, we're gonna learn about what, what they call significant digits in this lesson. And our target here for this lesson is to be able to attend to precision in measurements. So let's go ahead and we'll talk about significant digit. We'll talk about the idea behind what this is, and then we'll talk about how we use it when we um, do physics. So let's go ahead and talk about that. All right, so here I have a book, a physics book. And let's say I wanna measure how long is the book going across, okay? Simple enough, I have a ruler, right? Now, if you take a look at my ruler, this is a great ruler, right? You see, it's got this section here and this section here, right? Each section is 10 centimeters long. So what's the best I can measure with this ruler? Let's take a look. Let's try it. When you measure, you should really put it down on the table and, you know, lay it flat and stuff, but you won't be able to see that. So let me hold it up like this. Okay, if you take a look, it uh, goes more than 20 centimeters. Take a look, see it goes further than that mark right there. That mark right there would be 20 centimeters long. It goes further than that, right? So it's more than 20 centimeters long. How many centimeters is it? Well, is it 30 centimeters long? No, it's more than 20. It's less than 30, right? But can we do a little bit better than saying it's 20 centimeters long? I mean, if we look at it, it's clearly not 35 centimeters long. It's, you know, maybe we can estimate that. Maybe it's uh, just a little bit more than 20. Looks like it's probably even less than 21 if we estimate that pretty well, right? So, how long is my book? What's the best I can say? It's 20 point something, right? I don't know. My ruler wasn't so good. But maybe, maybe I can do better. Maybe I can measure it with a better ruler. Here, I have a better ruler. You see, this ruler is not just marked every 10 centimeters. This ruler is marked every centimeter. So let's put this ruler up against our book and see how long is our book. And again, you should lay things on the table when you measure them. We're gonna do the best we can here. See, okay, there's 20, All right, there's 21. It looks like, you see, it goes further than the 20, but it doesn't get to the 21. Right. So, how long is my book? It's 20 point something, right? We can probably estimate it's less than 20 and a half, right? So maybe you can say that's maybe, yeah, I don't know, 20.4, 20.3, something along those lines, right? But exactly how long is my book? I don't know, my ruler wasn't good enough to measure exactly, right? So every centimeter, and it wasn't good enough. I got another ruler. This one's even better. This one's not just marked every centimeter. This one's marked every tenth of a centimeter, every millimeter. Let me use this ruler and let's try to see how long is my book. So I'm gonna put it on here pretty nice. And again, you should lay it flat on the table, but then you won't be able to see it. So I'm gonna hold it up as best I can. So we'll take a look there. And you can see there's 20 centimeters, and there's 21 centimeters. And that's the back of the book you can see there. It's very kind of look at it like this, okay. Okay, so there's 20.5 is that longer line right there in the middle. And it looks like it doesn't quite go to 20.5, but it looks like it goes more than 20.4. So maybe it's 20.45. Right? Point being, okay, as good as you make your ruler, keep in mind, this ruler 
is definitely a lot better than this ruler, right? But however good your ruler is, it's never going to fall exactly on a mark on your ruler. We can have the best ruler in the world. We can have such tiny little tick marks. We can have 10 tick marks between each one of those marks. It's never going to fall exactly on a line. And so there's always some amount of uncertainty with your measurement, right? So with my first ruler, when I measured that book, the best I could say is it was about 20, right? The second one, keep in mind, it only measures to the centimeter, but I could estimate it a little bit better. Usually what we'll do is we'll estimate one digit beyond what we're able to measure. So with, with my better ruler, it was definitely 20, but not 21. And you remember we estimated it is maybe about 20.5. Right? So usually we'll estimate one more digit than we can actually measure. And then with, uh, with our even better ruler, with our best ruler here, we said it was 20. It's a little bit more than 20.4, but a little bit less than 20.5. Maybe we can estimate it as 20.45 centimeters. Right? So with this one, I can estimate it to the centimeter even though it only measures to the tens of centimeters. With this one, I can estimate it to the tenth of a centimeter, even though it only measures to the centimeter. And this one, even though it only measures to the uh, tenth of a centimeter, I can estimate it to the hundredth of a centimeter. One more place than it actually measures. So here's the question. If I told you a measurement, you be able to tell me which ruler I used to make that measurement. So here's some some measurements, right? Can you tell me which ruler did I use to make each one? You see the first one up there? 16.2 centimeters. Which ruler did I use to make that measurement, right? Okay. Was it this one? This one can only measure to the tens of centimeters. So you could estimate to the centimeter but this is to the tenth of a centimeter, so it wasn't that one. What about this one? This one can measure to the centimeter, which means we can estimate to the tenth of a centimeter. You see, tenth of a centimeter, which means we used this ruler to make that measurement. What about the second number there, three centimeters? Could it have been this one? Well, I could definitely measure three centimeters on this ruler, it's right there. But then I would also estimate one more digit. So I, I used a ruler that was less accurate than that. And I only have one other ruler that's not as accurate as that, and that's this one, right? Well, we can only measure to the tens of a centimeter. We can estimate to the centimeter. So three centimeters, I used this ruler. And of course, that last one, where you can see it's measured it's estimated to the hundredth of a centimeter, I would have used a ruler that was marked to the tenth of a centimeter. Right? So I would have used this ruler to make that third measurement. Okay. So when you look at a measurement, you can tell something about the accuracy of the tool that was used to make that measurement. Right? Um, when we report measurements in science, it's very important to keep our numbers straight so that so that we um, whoever's reading our work knows what the accuracy of the instrument we used was. Okay? And in physics in particular, we're gonna do lots of calculations that involve measurements. And as we do calculations involving measurements, what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to track that accuracy through our calculations. And I'm gonna show you how we do that. Okay, and the first step, we need to understand something called significant digits. So let's go ahead and talk about significant digits. Now here's the thing, okay, significant digits, sometimes also called significant figures. The two terms are interchangeable. I might say significant digit, I might say significant figure, they mean the same thing, interchangeable terms. Okay, consider this measurement right here, 2,300 centimeters. What type of instrument did we use to measure this? Okay, did I use an instrument that measures to the thousand centimeters 
and then estimate the three? Or did I use an instrument that measures to the tens of centimeters and then estimate the ones? Which, which way did I do it, okay? Now, kind of the, the convention is if you don't see a decimal point in that number, these zeros were not measured. Sometimes numbers in digits in a number are only there to hold a place and they weren't actually measured, right? See these zeros? We didn't measure those. They're placeholders. They need to be there, right? If they weren't there, this number would be 23. And 2,300 is definitely not the same as 23. So those, those zeros need to be there to keep track of that, 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 that place, right? But they're, they're not measured. They weren't measured. They're just placeholders. These zeros are not significant. Okay? And that's the idea with significant digits. Significant digits are the numbers that we measured or estimated not the numbers that just hold a place, okay? And a clue here is that the only numbers that are just there to hold a place are zeros. So the first rule with significant digits is any digit that's not a zero is significant. Consider this measure. Um, you can see in this one, we have two zeros in that number, but one of the zeros is between numbers that aren't zeros, okay? When you look at this number, that last zero right there is just there to hold the place. That one is just a placeholder. It's not significant, just the same as in the last example. But what about that zero? What about the zero that's between the two and the three? Is it just a placeholder or is it something that was measured? Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, if I was able to estimate that three that's in the tenths place, then I was able to measure what was in the hundredths place, right? I can't estimate this if I can't measure that. So that zero, the zero that you see that's between significant digits is significant. So as we deal with, as we determine which digits are significant and which digits are not, only zeros can be not significant, but sometimes zeros are significant. So in this particular example here, that last zero is just a placeholder, it's not significant, but that zero that's between the two and the three is significant, right? So the second rule with significant digits is zeros that are between significant digits are significant. I would look at that number and say it has three significant digits, the two, the zero, and the three, and then the other zero is not significant. Okay, in this measurement, you can see something a little bit different. You can see in this one, we have a two and a three that we know are significant because of the first rule. The first rule said that digits that aren't zero are significant. You know the zero that's between them is significant because of the second rule that says that a zero that comes between significant digits is significant. But what about these zeros at the beginning? Were those zeros at the beginning, were they measured? Or were they just estimate? Or were, are they just there to, to hold the place, right? Well, zeros that come before the first significant digit aren't measured. We didn't measure those zeros. Those zeros are just there to hold the place. They're placeholder zeros. So I like to say for the third rule, I call them leading zeros, le zeros that come before the first non-zero digit. Leading zeros are not significant digits, okay? So in this measurement here, there are three significant digits, the two, the two zero three, and then the first two zeros are not significant. It doesn't matter which side of the decimal point they're on. If they're leading zeros, they're not significant. Okay, what about zeros that come at the end of a number? Look at this top number up here, 3,000. So you've got a three, which is definitely a significant digit because of the first rule that says any number that's not a zero is significant. So that three is definitely significant, but what about the zeros there that follow it? Um, zeros that, 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 that come at the end of a number, I call them trailing zeros. It depends, okay? It depends on what else you see there. If there is a decimal point in the number, if you see a decimal point written, 
then those trailing zeros are significant. If you don't see a decimal point written, they're not significant, okay? So in this number here, 3,000, those three zeros are not significant digits. I would look at that number and I would say that that number has one significant digit. It's just the three, okay? But what about the next number, 3.0? Does that have, is that zero significant or not? Well, I can see a decimal point written in that number. So that zero is significant. So that number right there would be two significant digits. And that's a big difference between writing just three and writing 3.0. Very often you're gonna see written 3.0. And some pe sometimes people say, why do you write the point zero? Isn't that the same thing as just three? Well, no it's not because 3.0 is more accurate. It's more precise than just three, right? It, it's got two significant digits rather than just one significant digit. What about this third one right here, 30, with the decimal point? You see, I chose to write a decimal point there. You might say that number doesn't need a decimal point, but that decimal point, what it's doing is it's making the zero significant. So I can see that number 30 point, and I know it has two significant figures. That zero is significant. Whereas if I had written it without the decimal point, it would only have one significant digit. It would be like the first one up there, 3,000, and the zero would not be significant. So the, the, the fourth rule for significant digits is that these trailing zeros are only significant if you see a decimal point in the number. All right, the fifth rule for significant digits has to do with numbers that aren't measured, things that are counted rather than measured. Like for example, 18 cars, right? I go out in the parking lot and I count there are 18 cars out there. Did I measure that? I didn't really measure that. Is there any possibility that there's 18.2 cars in the parking lot? No, we usually don't measure cars in, in, in fractions of a car. So, I mean, it, it's only something that can really be a whole number. It's something that uh, I counted rather than measured. If you have an, a number that's something counted, rather than measured, we say it has an infinite number of significant digits. Um, also going along with this, things like conversion factors, numbers that you use to convert between units. So if I say there's 10 centimeters or 10 millimeters in a centimeter, that 10 is a counted number rather than a measured number, right? And we say that it has an infinite number of significant digits. Even though there's only two digits there, it has an infinite number of significant digits. It's infinitely precise, okay? So counted numbers, conversion units, things along those lines. Sometimes there's a number that's in an equation already. That number is also like a counted number. It, it's infinitely significant, infinite number of significant digits. So rule number five, counted numbers have an infinite number of significant digits. Okay, so how many significant digits are in that number? Well, let's think about it here. We've got, by rule number one, we've got a one and a three that are not zeros. Rule number one tells us any digit that's not a zero is significant. So the one and the three, definitely significant. Okay, what about the zero that's between them? Rule number two tells us about between zeros. Rule number two tells us that between zeros are significant. So that zero is also significant. What about the zero at the end, the trailing zero? Well, rule number four tells us that trailing zeros are only significant if we see a decimal point. Do we see a decimal point in that number? Yeah, we do. So that trailing zero, it is significant. So which digits are significant? All four of them are significant. So if I asked you how many significant digits are in that number, you would answer, there are four. All four of those digits are significant. How about this number? How many significant digits are in that number? Well, by rule number one, we can look at the two and the three and we can say, yeah, those two, they're definitely significant, two and three. What about the zero that's between the two and the three? Is that one significant? Yep, rule number two tells us that between zeros are also significant. What about the zero that comes at the end? Is that one significant? That's a trailing zero. Well, rule number four tells us that trailing zeros are significant if there's a decimal point in the number. Is there a decimal point in the number? 
Yeah, there is. So that zero, also significant. Okay. And then the question is, what about these three zeros that come at the beginning? 0, 0.00, are those significant? Well, rule number three tells us leading zeros are not significant. So those three zeros are not significant. So how many digits in that number are significant? Well, 0, 0.00 are not, and then 2, 0, 2, and 3 are significant. So that means there are four significant digits in that number. There's seven digits in the number, only four of them are significant. So I would answer and I would say there are four significant digits in that number. Okay, what about a number that's in scientific notation? Um, this is what makes scientific notation really, really useful for us in physics, okay? Because when a number is written in scientific notation, any digit that's in this part of the number is significant. And any digit that's not significant is in this part of the number. All of these are the not significant digits. And all of these are the significant digits. So you can just look at this part and count them up. So how many digits are in this number? There's three, which means that whole number, 3.20 times 10 to the fourth, has three significant digits. All the significant digits are in this part. Those are the digits that aren't significant. Okay, now that we know how to determine which digits are significant, which digits aren't, we're going to need to be able to use this as we go forward in class to keep track of the precision of our measurements as we do calculations. So if we're going to add something, subtract, multiply, or divide, how do we keep track of that precision? Because when I, when I, when I do a calculation, my answer that I get can't be any more precise than the numbers that I started off with, than the measurements that I, that I had at the beginning. Right? So if I've measured two things to the, the tenth of a centimeter and I multiply them, the answer I get is going to go out to the hundredth of a centimeter. And did I measure anything to the hundredth of a centimeter? Why would my answer be more precise than the measurements I started off with? Right? So we need to know how to keep track of this as we, as we do our calculations. So let's talk about adding and subtracting, which actually doesn't involve significant digits. Um, but we'll do it a whole lot less often than multiplying and dividing, which does involve significant digits. So let's look at adding and subtracting, it's both the same way. So let's just look at an addition problem. Um, when we add two numbers, what we want to do is we want to round our answer to the least number of decimal places. So let's look at this, let's add these numbers. Here I get uh, one, three, decimal, five, four. And we want to round our answer To, to the least precise of our measurements. We want to look at decimal places. When you add or subtract, look at decimal places. You can see this number had two digits after the decimal place. And this number had one digit after the decimal place. You want to round it so that it has the same as the least number of decimal places. So I want to round that answer so that it's only got one digit after the decimal. So 13.54, I will round to 13.5. If you answer 13.54, you're not right. I know that's what these numbers add up to, but these aren't just pure numbers like you see in math. These are measurements, and we have to keep track of the precision. We can't say that this digit is 4 because we don't know what that digit is in this number. Maybe this was 1.23, and then that would be a, what, a 7 or something, right? We don't know. So the best we can do is round it off to the least number of decimal places. So when you add or subtract, round it to the smallest number of decimal places. Okay, what about when we multiply or divide? Let's take a look at this one. 15.3 times 4.2, okay? If I take my calculator and I punch that into my calculator, I get 64, let me write it down, 64. Point two. That's not two. Two, six. Okay. Now, this is more precise than either one of my measurements was. You can see this is, this is a tenth place, this is a tenth, this is a hundredth place, right? It's more precise than either of my measurements was. What I need to do 
is I need to round my answer. When you multiply or divide, we're going to round the answer to have the same number of significant digits as the least precise measurement. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the two numbers that I started with, and I'm going to ask how many significant digits are in each of those numbers. Let's look at 15.3. How many significant digits are in that number? One, five, and three. They're all significant. That's three significant digits. I'm going to put a little three up here. Okay. What about in the other measurement we started with? 4.2. How many significant digits are in that number? Well, four and two, those are both significant. So there's two significant digits there. And now I'm going to ask myself, which one had fewer significant digits? And it's the two. The two significant digits is less, right? So I want to round my answer so it has that same number of significant digits. I want to round this so that it only has two significant digits. So I'm going to look at my number. And I'm going to say, where's the first significant digit? It's the first number in the number, right? So that six is the first significant digit. Where's the second significant digit? Well, it's the next digit, right? So if I want there to be two significant digits, I need to round my answer right there at the second significant digit. So I'm gonna look at my four, and I'm gonna say, is it gonna go up to five, or is it gonna stay a four? Well, the next digit there is a two, so it's gonna stay a four, right, because it's not five or over. So my 64.26 is gonna round off to 64. 64 has two significant digits, which is the same as the least precise measurement. All right, let's look at one that's got some scientific notation in there. We've got 102 divided by 3.1 times 10 to the sixth. So I'm gonna punch it in my calculator and let me write what I get. My calculator says, keep in mind your calculator doesn't think about significant digits at all. It doesn't do math with measurements. It does math with pure numbers. So it's not going to round it correctly for you. My calculator says zero point four zeros and then three two nine zero three. Okay. I get a long decimal there. Clearly more more precise than either one of my measurements was. Okay. So now we need to round it correctly. We need to say, okay, um, what's the least number of significant digits? So let me look at my two numbers that I started with, 102. How many significant digits are in that number? Well, all three of those numbers are significant. The one and the two, because they're not zeros, and zero, because it's between them. So that number has three significant digits. What about this number down here? Okay. Well, with scientific notation, we just look at the number part. This is all the digits that aren't significant. So we'll just look at the number part. How many significant digits are in 3.1? Well, there's two. They're both significant, right? Neither digit is a zero, so they're both significant. That one has two significant digits, which is less. Three or two. Two is less. So I need to round this so it has two, two significant digits. So ask myself, where is the first significant digit? Is this zero significant? No. By rule three, a leading zero is not significant. What about this one? It's the same story. Same, same, same. Here's the first significant digit. That three is the first significant digit. I want two significant digits, so let me go to the second significant digit, which is that two. Now I'm going to round there. I'm going to say, does that 2 go up, or does it stay the same? And the next digit's a 9, so it's going to go up to a 3. So all of these zeros that were not, they still have to be there. They're placeholders. If I just put 33, that would be a very different number. I still need all those non-significant zeros. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And then the first significant digit was a three. Second one was a two, and we said it's gonna go up to a three. Two significant digits. Now, because they give us scientific notation to start off with, 
and this is kind of a really small number, it would probably be nice to give our answer in scientific notation. So let me move my decimal point over and I'll end up with 3.3 times 10. See, I moved my decimal point to the right. One, two, three, four, five places. So that'll be 10 to the negative five. You remember what we said with scientific notation is all the digits that are significant will be in this part of the number. And look at that, my two significant digits are in this part of the number. All the digits that are not significant will end up in the, in the 10 term, right? So all of those zeros are right there. So two significant digits. All right, so from this point on, in our, in our physics class from here until the end of the class, every single calculation you do, every time you add or subtract or multiply or divide some things, you need to round to the correct number of digits or places, okay? Every single one, every single time. If you don't, you're wrong, okay? If the answer was 15.1 and you wrote 15.11, you're wrong. You got the wrong number of significant digits. Now I'll tell you what, on the assessment, I'll give you some points for getting the right answer and I'll give you some points for getting the right significant digits, right? So if you don't have the right significant digits, you still get the points for, for having the right answer, but you won't get the points for having the right number of significant digits. And you're probably not gonna get an A on the assessment without having your significant digits right. So make sure we can do this. We're gonna practice this a little bit before we move on. Um, but before we move on, make sure you can round correctly. All right there, so we, we've talked about precision and measurement, we've talked about significant digits, we've talked about how to round correctly after adding and subtracting, and how to round correctly after multiplying and dividing. So hopefully that helps us to be able to attend to precision in measurements. Until next time, take it easy.